to spend too much of time on this because I really want to, you know, look at the virtual world and see how we are able to kind of have a pitch for us forever, anytime, not necessarily when somebody actually calls you up or you happen to meet someone, but we will, we will do justice to this also. And I, I, I'm just going through the slides one by one, but if you have a compelling question, please do put it in the chat and I will request Ruchi or Bhagyashri to kind of, you know, uh, stop me. If you feel that it, uh, you, I need to answer or respond to that question at that very minute, otherwise we will take questions towards the end. Sure. All right. So length of the pitch, we already spoke about it. 30 seconds long is what is the thing. Look at that cartoon. He's continuously saying there's more, there's more. And the other guy has already said, what was he saying? And he's just walking away. So let's keep it concise. It should be short enough to get your message across anytime. Um, think of it as a commercial and that you are the product. And you've got 30 seconds to market yourself and convince whoever is listening to not only change the channel. Don't we do that always, right? The minute we get into commercial Times you say, okay, fine, let me look at which other, uh, you know, channel I can just catch while there's a five minute break over here and uh, commercials are coming. Sometimes you actually sit down and watch a commercial. So that also happens. So the idea here is that you have to convince the person who's listened to you not to change the channel, which means continue to listen to you uh, and uh, ensure the person says, I want to hear more. That is what you have to leave the person with. So you do not put everything into the 30 seconds, 60 seconds. You, what do you put? We will talk about it. But again, the goal is that the person should want to listen to you more and not walk away to the next person in the line or change the channel. Especially if you have attended virtual conferences, there is a networking zone in those virtual conferences where you can actually go and meet people. You can just click on, you know, uh, we like the Zoom screen. You can click on one of the uh, pictures or the name that comes across. And if you're not very happy interacting, you can actually jump off and, you know, move to another one. You don't want that to happen. So let's look at what are the various, you know, uh, situations where we may have to pitch. First and foremost is to land a job. And uh, maybe you are at a career fair where there are hundreds of candidates who are vying for attention. Uh, of a particular recruiter, a particular company, a particular, you know, senior manager who's sitting at the booth of a particular company. So you need to get the attention of that person and you want to pitch, right? So that's one of the situations. The second is, as I said, um, during the job interview itself, tell me something about yourself. Invariably, I think that's how they start a conversation. Despite the fact that they have seen your CV, despite the fact that, you know, you may already have had, you know, a high level conversation with the recruiter and he or she would have passed on information about you. The starting question usually is tell me something about yourself. So you should have an elevator pitch for that question. Um, if you are an entrepreneur, then uh, you may want to describe your business, product, idea. But if you're describing it to a client, your pitch is going to be different. Versus if you're describing that to a potential VC who may be investing in your idea, who may be investing or you want this person to invest in your venture, then your pitch is, pitch is definitely going to be different. And definitely we meet people without any um, you know, background in terms of I am meeting so-and-so for this purpose, right? We, we kind of always... Um, land up meeting people in personal, you know, uh, situations, occasions, in professional conferences without anything around it. Not because you want a job, not because you want to sell something. You're just casually introducing yourself, but you never know what that casual introduction can do to you or for you, what opportunities it can open up for you. So even for that casual introduction, a personal introduction, you need to have an elevator pitch, okay? So these are some of the situations where you need to kind of have a prepared pitch. And let's look at how do we go about making it interesting. So the first and foremost statement that you need to have in your pitch is an attention grabber, okay? 
most of us, if we kind of ask them for examples to pitch, and we had a great, you know, pitch started, you know, uh, our, our session today started with a great pitch from Anu. But usually, you know, whenever I say, can you, you know, kind of, you know, give me an example of a, an elevator pitch, put them in the spotlight, they will start with, I have 10 years of experience in this organization, blah, 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 blah. And I say, why should I, you know, even have a conversation? All of us have 10 years of experience. Maybe in a different industry, maybe in a different domain, maybe, you know, in a different country. Why is it that I should listen to you a bit more, right? So your pitch should have an attention grabber, which could be an interesting fact or statistic to use at the beginning of your speech, the elevator pitch. So the goal of this attention grabber is to immediately engage someone, to whoever you are pitching, so that the person is intrigued and wants to learn more. And again, Anu, thank you for making life so easy for me. I don't have to bring out example pitches. I will go back to Anu's pitch because she had a great attention grabber, right? We want to know more. We were immediately engaged with what she said. So you need to have an attention grabber, which is an interesting fact or statistic. She said, the work that I do, I have seen that in all conferences, we have only manners, which means that we have only men as speakers majority of the times in any conferences. Except for when, you know, it's a women's only conference, then by default, you will have a large number of women and you may have one or two men. But if you go to a conference, which is for all genders, you will usually see it's mostly men. Very, very less number of women. So she gave us that kind of grabbed our attention. Uh, okay. Um, the next is, it has to spark curiosity. So you kind of told about the interesting fact. You have told about the problem. And I've kind of, you know, got your attention. Now for me, Anu's, uh, you know, uh, pitch was really great because I happen to be a speaker. I go to a lot of places and give talks. So I would really lo love to you know, know more from Anu. But supposing this is the pitch that she gave to somebody else who, you know, doesn't care about speaking engagements. So definitely she has grabbed the attention, but has she managed to spark more curiosity? Okay, fine, Anu, good uh, knowing you. You know, that might be a response uh, from this person who's not really, you know, in, in, in the same uh, league as uh, other speakers and says, you know, good luck. Uh, and uh, if I come across someone who, you know, wants to uh, kind of look at, uh, look for women speakers, I will probably you know, connect them with you and move on, right? And you don't want that move on. So the pitch also should be such that it is evoking curiosity in anyone and everyone or a large amount. Now, there could still be some people who kind of, you know, will not fall for it. But say 80, 20 rule, 80% of the people, regardless of whether they are your potential customers or not, are curious enough to know more from you. So that's something that you have to add on after the attention grabbing statement or the problem statement that you are describing. Of course, it has to be a summary. So 30 seconds has to be managed with a summary. It can't be a you know, long monologue. It has to be very well summarized, which basically talks about how are you doing it? What has been the outcome? While I can say that, you know, I, I really want to ensure that in our world there is equality and if there's no gender gap, etc. But how? I mean, all of us have this passion, right? To solve world hunger. But how am I doing that? Like, for example, I know the group here, the Pace Up Mom group has been telling us a lot about that. So, wow, their, their intentions are great. But I'm sure we are, we are wanting to know how and what has been the outcome so far? What has been their achievement so far? Keeping in mind it's 30 seconds. Keeping in mind you want to ensure the person is interested. It is not a monologue. It is not statistics. It is not none of that, right? And uh, it should also be something which invites questions. You don't, you know, say, you know, 10 lines and then you kind of keep quiet. Somewhere towards the end of, you know, the 30 seconds should be a statement that kind of invites the person to continue the conversation. So either you put out uh, a question yourself or you leave it in, in, in such a situation that the other person starting to ask you questions. So it's like an invitation to a conversation. 
So don't make it sound like an ad slogan also, right? While I said you are the, you know, commercial, you are the product and it's a commercial, but you don't want to sound like an ad slogan. It has to have all of these. At the end of it, the person should feel like talking to you a bit more. Should feel like, oh my God, you know, the time, I, 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 don't, I wish I had more time and kind of ask you, you know, when you are available for speaking a little more about what you said so far. So let me give you an example, or rather two examples, right? So people ask me, what does your, what does your husband do? The typical question, what do you do, what does your husband do? So whenever they ask me, what does my husband do? This is what I say, um, that uh, people today earn a lot of money, but they don't know what to do with it. And uh, my husband helps them manage their money, okay? Now, this is a statement that I have been saying from the time I got married. So I recently celebrated 25th wedding anniversary. So 25 years ago, I didn't even know that there was an existence of an elevator pitch. But this is how I used to say. Versus if I say, you know what, he helps people with their investments. He's a financial portfolio manager. How many of you would want to kind of, you know, stand and, you know, listen a little bit more about my husband? Because you have had it enough, right? There are plenty of people who will come and say, hey, I'll help you manage your investments. So where do you invest? Or do you have a problem? You know, have you looked at this mutual fund? Versus, when I, if I say something to the effect that people today earn a lot of money and they just don't know what to do with their money and my husband, you know, kind of helps them manage their money, people may say, okay. So I have not given the usual spiel. And they may say, okay, how does he do that? And, and maybe, you know, the conversation will, you know, continue. So I also do a lot of sessions on, you know, networking. And one of the things that I tell people um, is that, you, you should have an elevator pitch ready when you are going to these conferences uh, where they, you will have an opportunity to network with others. Because what is the idea behind networking? You have very limited time and you want to meet so many people and so many people want to meet you, know, you and others. You can't be taking away all the time. So, And the opportunity has to be given to the other person to speak. If you are continuously taking away all the five minutes that is available between you and him or her, you've lost it. You're not going to, you know, build a network because the person will think, okay, she spoke about herself and, you know, what's the point? So you have to have an elevator pitch via which you introduce yourself and then you throw open-ended questions so that the other person starts talking about himself or herself. So at one of the events where I was, you know, giving uh, the session on networking, I said this and then I finished it up and somebody asked me, can you give me an example of an elevator pitch? So while I'm telling you all this gyan, I don't have a ready-made elevator pitch, right? I make it up on the fly based on who I'm meeting and you know what, uh, what the context is. So the minute they asked me for an example, at that point in time, I was heading the jobs for her foundation. So I just said this, you know, so after 25 years of a career in IT, I decided that I need to move into the space of gender uh, and uh, I'm heading up for a foundation which has been established to bridge the gender gaps in our country. Uh, we are looking to do this by changing mindsets of both the women and the entire ecosystem around us. So I just said this because they had asked for an example. I said this and I kind of finished up the session. I had people who came to me after the session and said, I thought you're going to tell us more. So how are you going to bridge the gender gap? So how do you change mindsets? Of course, maybe of the women we can understand, but of the entire ecosystem. And I think I, I, I kind of, you know, did a good job there because the idea is that you want people to ask more. You want people to be curious and, you know, kind of stay on or, you know, invite you for another question. So some crude examples that I thought I would, you know, share here to uh, tell you how does one make it interesting and not kind of, you know, just, just read like a CV. So in my example also, I said after 25 years of IT, but how does it make a difference? You know, in today's world, I think 25 and five really doesn't make any difference. You're going to say, I am a project manager with 10 years of experience in, you know, the banking industry. Really? Does that 10 years really signify anything? I think in today's uh, scenario, 10 and 5 and 25 doesn't mean anything. So don't, don't, you know, you don't, because 30 seconds has to be really utilized well. So don't take away five seconds in saying this. You have to think of that attention grabber. You have to think of how to spark the curiosity, right? Don't sound like a job title, project manager, doesn't matter. Product manager, doesn't matter. 
don't you know reel it out like a cv or you know your linkedin profile that is not your elevator pitch and don't be self centered while it is about selling quote unquote selling yourself uh because at the end of the day you want the person to converse more with you for what purpose either because uh, you want to see whether there's an opportunity or that person wants to you know kind of uh, see if there's a opportunity for which you could be suited or if you are an entrepreneur then you know whether this person wants to invest or, or it may not even be investment it may just be you know i want to get more feedback about this idea that i'm toying about do you think it is something you know required in the market today so it is for your own selfish purpose but your pitch cannot be self centered because at the end of the day you want the person to know, listen to you more and want to know more he or she is not going to be interested in knowing more about you if you have gone on talking in a very selfish mode okay um and uh, don't have unnecessary jargon and meaning meaningless you know buzzwords so um for example now i'm just thinking of you know what example i can give you around the attention grabber so when uh, she introduced uh, me when bhagyashri introduced me she said something around um, i work at the national education society of karnataka which has whatever number of educational institutions my role is to build the industry academia connect and uh, i don't know whether she said it or i said it but the role is to build the industry academia connect to ensure that our curriculum is more relevant to the industry needs today okay now i think by making a statement of this sort we have identified an industry problem so if i were to say you know i work at national education society and my role is to build uh, relationships uh, with uh, industries Uh, and see you know how we can partner with them i think that's an extremely bland statement you may not even okay fine all of us are building partnerships every other company every other organization institution has to build partnerships so what's the big deal but the minute i talk about the problem statement that we have and all of you are, i'm sure will be willing to accept and understand this problem which is that today's students and we have some students also in uh, attending our session today realize that the curriculum is either outdated or is not kind of uh, you know done in a manner that gives them the industry exposure so they are left high and dry the minute they finish their college and they have to you know bundle up a few more courses companies will have to you know spend an uh, a year probably training them and all of that right so if i bring about this industry problem in my uh, elevator pitch i think i have managed to grab the attention of lot of people because everybody today understands this industry problem um and the pitch has to scream out in some ways while you're not selling yourself it has to scream out that you're the right candidate so this is exactly how i managed to get my job at national education society i did not go there with the intention of getting a job so i'm an alumni from national college for those of you who know uh, stay in bangalore know the college is 100 years old um and i had got a whatsapp forward uh, from someone uh, which had said the national college is starting three new courses so this was last year i hope you are able to hear me well because it's pouring over here am i yeah. audible well yeah. yes yes you are very well audible don't okay. worry all right fine um so uh, i've got this whatsapp forward which said the national college is starting three new courses one in data science one in iot one in biomedical electronics um and i got really curious about it one because it's my college and two you know i haven't really heard of science colleges actually starting combinations like this uh, maybe engineering colleges but not pure science colleges and third uh, because my own daughter was in 12th and she was looking to pursue data science so i felt oh wow you know there seems to be a college which is offering this combination and there was the name of this person at the end of that whatsapp uh, forward say uh, you know who was behind uh, starting these courses so i found this person on linkedin i connected with him and i said i would like to meet you and he asked me to meet him in the college when i went to the college all i said was you know i have you know so many years of experience in the industry and i have a great network and i am willing to kind of help you guys with whatever you need and i knew that the problem that they are going to have is it's easy to start courses but where do you get you know trained faculty 
because these are very very new subjects so you are not going to be you know finding uh, you know teaching experts you will have to actually get it from the industry and why will somebody who is working you know uh, in a cap gemini or somewhere come and you know either quit his or her job and you know become a faculty member in a college with you uh, you know respect to educational institutions uh, sometimes the salaries are not as compelling as what uh, you might uh, earn you know outside uh, uh, and uh, even if you were to kind of invite them as a guest faculty are you in a position to kind of match the hours and the timings and things like that so that's a real problem you can start a course but for it to be successful you one need faculty and two you need to give a lot of hands on projects for the students you know because data science and things are like that cannot be theoretical so i just told them that you know i think this will probably be a challenge for you please you know feel free to you know call on me if you ever need any help and this was purely in a helpful manner i was not looking to get hired but the person actually went and spoke to the management saying that there is this lady who can make a difference and uh, they created this role for me just with that conversation that i had and he came and told me why only for these three new courses we would like you to help the entire institution so that is the way your attention grabber by calling out the industry problem and by ensuring that you are evoking some curiosity in the person because i must have talked about you know the companies that i worked in the connections that i have some stories that i might have narrated because of which the opportunity just came by so don't fill your pitch with adjectives because in 2020 we can open up a dictionary and bring out the best of adjectives nobody wants to know uh, okay so it is not an english grammar test so you have to ensure going back to the basics of how do i grab the attention what is the kind of an industry problem that i can narrate which will evoke some curiosity in the person and i will leave it in such a way that it sounds like an invitation for more conversation so let me you know kind of bring up couple of examples so here is someone who says my name is ms dean i have 10 years of experience in marketing in the last 2 years i have moved on to digital marketing my first project was to build a digital presence for a startup in the automotive industry i have delivered four projects successfully my current project is in the healthcare segment i am looking for a new opportunity to utilize my skills in startups which are new and just coming into the market so that's what ms dee's elevator pitch is and i think i if i had timed it it would have been within 30 seconds now let me hear from you all what do you think about this pitch anyone and i am not able to see the chat window or anything but i am happy for you to unmute yourself and you know tell me what do you think about this pitch or you i think it's quite chat. yeah i think it's quite self centered because she's just talking about herself what she has done uh, rather than you uh, know citing a problem that she can help solve so that's my interpretation okay and and you know who this was uh, shweta Shweta. Okay, hi Shweta. All right, thank you. So you felt it was extremely self-centered, and why should somebody even bother about you know what she's done in the past, right? Anyone else? It seems more like a CV or like your LinkedIn profile rather than an attention grabber. Sure. Is that Urvashi? That's right, Nisha. It's Urvashi. Okay. All right. Sure. There is no attention grabber here. uh i did uh, marketing i moved to digital marketing i did four projects my current project there is nothing that kind of you know sparks curiosity in me for sure uh, now you want to go to startups okay fine go ahead is what i would say right anyone else who wants to kind of yes this is amita i would like to pitch in yeah please yes what i would like to say as a communication specialist that this kind of a conversation can get very boring your first line should be such that the other person would like to talk to you right right absolutely so it fails on that parameter sure sure yeah. i'm glad so it's been you know whatever i was saying so far has been vetted by a communication specialist thank you amita yes So, does anyone want to kind of uh, you know uh, take a shot at rephrasing this? So we know now all data is available to us about Miss B. 
anyone who wants to you know take a stab at how would you with this data try and pitch Okay. So obviously, my name is Miss D is okay because one has to give a name. But whether you put it in the beginning, end, or however, that's a different thing. Ten years of experience, irrelevant as I said. Marketing is okay to have. Um, in the last two years, I've moved on to digital marketing. Okay, the the lady wants to say that she knows the current trends of marketing. But what is the point of my first project? I mean, how is it even relevant? If you've done ten years, then why are we talking about first project? So there has to be some story around the first project because of which you bring it in. Otherwise, as Urvashi said, it's a CV. Um, and I am looking for a new opportunity to utilize my skills. Could be actually, you know, throwing you away from the person because the person will think, okay, you're coming to me because you want a job. तो क्यालेवेंट Uh, unless and until you have a story around it, and if you have a story around it, then please bring out that story, right? Uh, now, of course, we don't know what her story is, so it might be difficult for us to actually pitch. Um, but if someone wants to kind of fine tune even the basics of this, I'm happy to, you know, hear you out. Anyone? I think maybe she can highlight that she is on a mission to you know help startups and uh, she has X Y Z skills. Something on those lines, be that could uh, possibly uh, generate curiosity in the startups to want to connect with her. That's one thought. And who is this? Sorry, Shweta again. Okay, Shweta. So maybe you know, as we said, what is okay? Fine. She wants to help startups. So maybe she could have articulated what is the marketing issue, problem that a startup today faces. Right. The minute you talk about that, then the rest of it probably uh, becomes more relevant. Or if uh, there is something that she wants to talk about, the automotive segment, or she wants to talk about the healthcare segment, because this is that is what she's mentioning there. and talk about marketing problems in the healthcare segment and how she has probably been able to utilize her skills either with digital marketing or whatever to make a transformation in that area so that could have be another you know way to put it story about how she kept herself relevant by learning new skills that's also good instead of saying i have moved on to there could have been a nice story which says that you know she has kind of uh, either been the four in the forefront to pick up whatever new things are coming and and that's the way you know the marketing world has to emerge or something around it right okay um let me just okay give you another example here so this is uh, this is some i mean anyone can you all can do it very differently but just kind of reading through this so most of the new age startups today face the challenge of finding the right audience for their products we all know right uh, okay let me just read this as is and then we'll talk about it i have realized so ms d is saying i have realized in the last two years since i moved into digital marketing that touch point marketing is the most powerful as an example a publishing house may speak with an author at a trade show that same author then sees the name of the publishing house come up during an internet search and recollects talking to the publishing house earlier the next time the author attends a function where he meets with someone from the same publishing house now after this third touch point the author reaches out to the publishing house and becomes a client so it's all about branding and presence on the social media which i have been able to achieve with all my clients by helping them identify the biggest impact lowest effort affordable activity and make it work for them you can reach me on email id my name is ms d i would love to understand the challenges that you are facing as a new startup and see how can i help you overcome them 
so this is you know a transformation of the pitch that she was having uh, now she's actually identified the industry problem by saying most of the new age startups today because she wants to play in the startup world right so she's actually picking up what is the problem of the startup finding the right audience for their products and we all know that right while we can be on linkedin whether you are a company whether you are an individual you can you know have as much online presence as possible but do you know are the right people your audience do you have the right set of people in your following that's the biggest challenge today otherwise it's just you know content that is going out and out and out but you don't even know whether it's reaching the right audience so she's kind of put out the industry problem and by saying i have realized in the last two years since i moved into digital marketing that line so i moved to digital marketing in you know i've been in digital marketing for last two years she's kind of rephrased it and she's also telling that she knows the game she knows that out of the so many kinds of marketing that one can do she knows that touch point marketing is the most beneficial and she's giving an example of what is touch point marketing so you kind of you know listen you get curious if you are a startup and you see that this person seems to know what she is speaking about she is giving an example and she, now she is saying that instead of saying the 10 years instead of saying the projects she has done she is making one statement that i have been able to achieve this how did you do it remember that i said you need to kind of say what you did how you did it what is the outcome so she is saying i have been able to achieve it with all my clients by helping them identify the biggest impact and the lowest effort so she is kind of putting that ki i it's not about just spending money and money and money i am ensuring that we take the least effort and we still make it work for them and then she is leaving her you know uh, contact details and inviting for a further conversation to say that you know if you have any challenges i'm happy to have a chat with you so she is not saying i want to work in a startup world which is saying i would love to know what challenges you have and see if i can help exactly the way i went to national college right and said you know i would like to help so any thoughts on you know kind of transforming that pitch to this Uh, i would yeah i would put this whole thing like i help the startup world to or not make it preachy and say i try to get together with the startup group and solve their issues in digital marketing and try and let the other person put a question and start a conversation rather than saying so many lines together sure so if it is communication and that's what i would say right <clears throat> when it is about networking i said it is all about open ended questions uh, and you kind of get the other person to talk more but here we are talking about an elevator pitch so we don't even know whether the other person is interested in you know listening to us or not at the end of the day it is for us to ensure we are able to you know carve a path for us to you know get into their calendar and get some more time so the the idea of the elevator which is that you earn the second conversation whether at the same moment by extending it to half an hour or you know at another time and hence uh, you know if you kind of just say i help the startup you know i i, I like i like that um but what if the person is you know not in a mood to kind of say anything more I say okay fine uh, that's great now unless and until that person is interested is struggling with something may not you know uh, open up and if we are talking I about the other skin something about his work when Sorry. we put questions forward we get certain answers yeah but I, here we are talking about the elevator pitch so it is yes. about introducing yourself in the 10 20 seconds mm hmm right so yes. that is what we are trying to craft here i completely agree that the communication one on one is to be you know ensuring that you know we kind of open up uh, open um, provide an open conversation uh, via media for them but when how do you ensure that the person opens up unless the person is interested otherwise why should he come and listen to a ninja if i say that you know i really you know my mission is to help startups like for example the same thing which i told anu when anu says that it's very powerful 
uh, I don't know whether you were there when Anu uh, uh, kind of introduced herself. She said she's on a mission to ensure that there are no panels and conferences. It is very interesting for me because I kind of have a stake in that because I do go and speak. So I feel there's the right person that I should, you know, know more about. But for somebody else, you know, maybe a man himself, if she's going to say this, who knows? The man may say, okay, fine. I don't think you know, I need to speak to you. But she needs to tell the man also. Uh, she needs to tell everybody about it, whether the person wants to be a speaker or does not want to be a speaker. So you don't know whether the person will uh, converse with you unless and until you evoke that curiosity. And that is why it has to be, maybe I'm not saying this is the best. Maybe, you know, you got put off by the, uh, the entire example. Maybe we can have a better way of it. But it has to be a little more to evoke that curiosity and continue the conversation. That's, that's the only point. Any other thoughts? Hi, this is Anu. Um, yes, so Anu. Sorry, Anu, I've been just hopping you... on your example. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much. So, uh, so in this uh, particular uh, example that we are seeing, could uh, could this also end uh, as in? So what are your thoughts about uh, digital marketing and are you facing the same kind of an issue? We could, we could. So there is nothing to say this is the way it is, right? As long as you put out something over there, here I'm saying I would like to help you. Or you could say, okay, mm -hmm. you know, did you have any challenges? Did you have similar challenges? Or, you know, how has your digital marketing efforts been successful? Yeah. Anything, you know, you could have an open question which invites them, that, like uh, Amita was saying, which invites them to talk. Let's not make an assumption that they had challenges, right? So here it is trying to make an assumption that I would love to understand the challenges. Let's just ask them, you know, did you, how, how has it been successful for you? How's your, you know, marketing going? It could be anything like that. Right. Anyone else? Because after this, and I know that we have 25 minutes, I would like to move on to uh, where is the elevator part of our talk? So the, the point I was trying to make with the previous uh, slide, right, where we are saying 10 years of experience, the same thing being transformed to this, and I'm not saying this is the best, but the point is we all hopefully agree that there's no, no need to know, say this, uh, what does 10 years of experience indicate? Maybe just your age and nothing more, right? In 10 years, one could have been there he or she started. There is nothing to say that in 10 years, you actually move up the career ladder. You could have, you know, been a you know, static person with the organization has been happy to kind of keep you and you also are happy to kind of just do the same role that you've been doing for the last 10 years, you wouldn't even have moved up the career ladder. The 10 years is, you know, pretty useless. And anyways, your resume is going to give you all these details of how many projects you did and things like that. If at all, it is for uh, getting a job. So why have a pitch which is also going to read like a CV? Don't talk about why are you looking for a new opportunity? Why in an upcoming startup? I mean, don't make it so black and white to say, I'm looking for a job. So it has to be something around highlighting what was your best in all these 10 years. But even one small thing, I know that in 10 years, you probably have 20 things that you want to showcase and highlight. But that is for that one hour interview when you reach that stage. But bring out that one big thing, one thing which is so relevant, you think, to these people. Especially if you know the person you're talking to, then you should do research to find out what he or she is struggling with or his or her company is, you know, challenged today with. But otherwise, if it's just you landed up at an event where there are startups, then you kind of have it very generic. So find out what your highlight for that particular segment is. And, you know, leave them with, I can help you. Like I gave you an example of, I went to National College and said, hey, I can help you, you know, bring the industry experts. If no more thoughts on this, I will move on to our second part and we can always, you know, come back, uh, hopefully for more questions. I will try to definitely give you at least 15 minutes for Q&A. Should we move on?
Okay, I can't see anything. Sure. Uh, sure. No, yeah, yeah. No. Sure. Okay, so let's look at where is the elevator today. And it is, it is the social elevator today. As we already discussed, that even if it was not the pandemic, even if it was not, you know, be forced to work in a virtual world, the social, the online space has taken control of all our lives. And, and hence, you need to ensure that you have a social elevator pitch. When I say social elevator pitch, it is the social media. Whichever social media you kind of, you know, uh, is your favorite or all of them or some of them, but never underestimate the power of that. So your social media bios, starting with LinkedIn, are the elevator pitch of the digital age. And just like we said, you have 30 seconds. Here we are limited by characters. And that is what you have to convince someone to engage with you. So you know that on LinkedIn, and I'm taking the example of LinkedIn, you know that there is a headline. While LinkedIn gives you the facility to put everything under it, including awards, including voluntary you know, work that you do, projects, achievements, recommendations. But by the time someone comes to that, and why will someone come to that? It is the headline that you have. So if you, have, if you don't have a LinkedIn, please go and create one. If you have a LinkedIn profile, go and look at what does your headline say. Okay, so my headline says something around passionate uh, to make a difference uh, with every interaction that I have with a student uh, or a you know, woman. Uh, something to that you know, effect is what my headline says. A lot of people have you know, connected with me saying that, you know, how, how do you do that? Why do you do that? I'm really keen to you know, work with you because I also have similar interests. And that's how people have kind of reached out. They, they wouldn't probably go in and look at, okay, because they don't have to ask me these questions. After reading the headline, if they come down and see the kind of work that I'm doing, they probably will get to know about it. But that one thing was appealing enough and they kind of connect with me and say, I would like to have a conversation with you. Okay, so that's how you use uh, the social profiles that you have today to ensure that you pitch to whoever is seeing and you don't even know who's watching you online. But you are being watched. So remember that. Uh, and if you decide to make yourself invisible, I'm sorry, uh, that's not the way to be. How much ever we might hate uh, the, the uh, trolling that may happen or you know, the stalking that may happen, but there's no way out. Of course, you need to protect yourself, but there's no way out today. You have to be on social. You have to be ma make yourselves you know, uh, visible and ensure that you are making it very appealing. Your, your headlines and whatever other opportunity you get to put through that headline has to be catchy. Uh, if you have to share your value proposition. So I don't know. I mean, I have attended some LinkedIn courses and people may say hundreds of things. Um, there are some people say that, you know, at the top where you say uh, your, your title may be coming. up. Sometimes you, you choose to put uh, what your designation is at the top. Uh, sometimes uh, people actually put the various things that they do. So in my case, I may say I'm an educator and I'm a speaker and, you know, a leadership trainer, a coach. You know, I could do all of that. But somewhere I feel that doesn't give my value proposition. I would rather go with I'm passionate to you know to make a you know difference in people's lives with every interaction that I have with them because I feel that's my value proposition and that's what attracts um, rather than you know putting the kind of work that I do. And then of course you have opportunities if we are talking about LinkedIn to actually include links. Ensure that you make the best use of that. People may not actually go through your entire bio, but if you have put one, two, three links. If you have had an opportunity to, you know, speak somewhere and there's a recording available, if you've written some blogs or if you have, uh, you know, been carried, uh, your name has been carried into any article or anything that is relevant, you please put those links because number of people who've kind of, you know, after reading that first line have gone into my bio and they've got hold of one of the videos because if you see my LinkedIn profile, you have 20 videos of mine over there. They have, you know, seen one, it could be anything. And they've said, wow, it was, you know, I really want to you know, meet you and talk to you and you know, get to know you more. So then the details come and, you know, put all those things and ensure that you are consistent. And this consistency is 
that whichever social media you go to, ensure that it is consistent. You can't be saying something on LinkedIn and something else on Twitter and a, a third thing elsewhere. Also, if you started attending virtual conferences, you will see, and I'm not talking about Zoom, but you know, an actual virtual conferencing platform, like I was attending yesterday, uh, the women's web conference. I don't know if any of you attended that. They used a platform called as AirMeet. Beautiful platform. So it does ask you to put certain you know, details of yours, right? Name, designation, and then it gives you a small space to put a blurb about yourself. That's your elevator pitch today in the online world. Because what happened was when you go into that uh, conference and uh, one is you're attending a particular speaker session, on the right hand side, you will see all the attendees. So it's like a Zoom screen, you know, you will have on the right hand side, you will have so many, many, many uh, names that will appear. If you go and put your um, uh, mouse over that name, is when what you have described in that small box comes up. People, certain people had just, uh, some people had not even put their entire name. You must put, you know, your full name. Some people had chosen to put designation company. Some people had actually written something very interesting about themselves. Because how do I reach out? Now, if there are 100 attendees on, in this virtual space, I'm going to, you know, put my cursor on, on every, you know, person's uh, screen. And it might have a picture, it may not have a picture. But this is what is going to catch my attention. To say, hey, wow, this person seems to be doing something interesting. Let me talk further with them. So that's your elevator pitch. And ensure that that is consistent. So if I am saying I'm passionate about making a change, then I, be, I have to put something like that even in the conference. I should put the same wherever I kind of, you know, put out my online presence. And that's the consistency. Otherwise, people are going to get confused. I met a new Ganesh at that conference who said, okay, fine, she wants to, you know, make the biggest you know, change in the education system. And in the second conference, she is talking about leadership and things like that. Is it the same new Ganesh? And you want the person to realize that, you know, you are the one and same person and you're meeting the person a second and third time. And that's how relationships get built. So that consistency is extremely, extremely important. Understand the landscape. What do you mean by that? You may have heard of this term social listening, which means listen to online conversations. Now, how do you listen to online conversations? Any, any thoughts? How do you listen to online conversations? I'm not talking about a conversation that we are having here. I'm saying social listening. So you are on LinkedIn. How do you listen to a conversation on LinkedIn? What is a social listening? Anybody? Hi. Um, I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, hi, I'm Sujanta. So uh, we can listen through, you know, choose through hashtags. Like maybe I'm interested in uh, knowing about a particular topic and I can select a hashtag and then you know, see what people are talking about it. Sure. That, that, that's definitely a way to, you know, so you, you want to kind of know what's trending and you can use a hashtag. And yes, yeah. there are tools for social listening. It's, it's actually an accepted terminology social listening, which says that um, you have a presence on four social media platforms, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram for the younger generation today. Uh, there are tools which kind of combine all these and give you a dashboard and statistics to say, you know what, you put out something on this particular media, it has done so well. So many people are actually engaging with this post. While, you know, on Instagram, there are no followers or nobody liked your picture, but, you know, on um, LinkedIn, you know what you wrote because LinkedIn, you can write a lot, but on Insta probably it's very pictorial and visual. Um, on LinkedIn, people are engaging, but on Insta, I think, you know, nobody is even listening to you. So there are those tools and I'm not asking you to invest in those tools. Uh, Nietzsche, does social listening mean uh, like, uh, did you mean that uh, like suppose in my circle or um, the predominant connections in LinkedIn, um, to figure out uh, what kind of conversations or what kind of content they are writing in digital uh, platforms, does that does that mean? Yeah. So one is, of course, you need to know what is the trend. So what is it that uh, you know people are seeming to like and read and you know converse about? So that is one aspect. But it also has to fall in line with what is it that you want people to know you as. While there might be, you know, a, a very uh, hot, heated discussion going on a particular topic today, 
but if you're not really you know the kind of person who wants to associate with that so what is your brand what is the thought leadership you want to provide because of which people so even in your elevator page you are not going to talk about uh, you know the whatever the drug case that is happening today and that's not the way to introduce yourself right so you are going to kind of bring about your thought leadership what you stand for what are you good at but when i say listen here it means that see how people are engaging with the content that you're putting up to start with you have to put out content that's the first thing you can't just be sitting on linkedin and very quiet you can't sit and you know keep connecting with people and keep quiet you have to start putting out content posts your own posts reshare others posts and things like that with some stuff so you know people are engaging people may comment on something that you have written they may like it they may be contradictory they may debate all of that is okay but that is social listening so very quickly the first thing that you can do is to find out what your online presence is google your name how many of you have ever googled your name anybody who's googled their name google your name and say don't do it now otherwise you will get you know I, I, kind of i have done it i have done it a couple of times so the minute you google your name you will get to know this is what people know about you yeah and i have been told that i don't know how many hr folks are here today but i have been told that today if you're applying for a job and you send a cv the first thing they do is they pick your name and they google the name because today's world the demand and supply situation is such that there is no way you know one can make out who should i call for an interview you'll probably get thousands of applications on linkedin you'll have thousands of application for that one role which was there okay so the the recruiter first googles the name to say neeraja ganesh what comes up and based on what comes up you know you will know that this person is a thought leader or not you know what is the kind of presence that she holds what's the clout that she holds versus somebody else who may not have anything you know to their credit because they have not actively built a social profile a social presence doesn't mean that person is not good you know the cv might you know be much better than my cv but if you don't have that online presence the recruiter says okay looks like this person is really you know has a lot of thought leadership let's go with this person for the interview so google your name and uh, it will bring up stuff only when you also do stuff online we will talk about that um and uh, let me just move ahead yeah uh monitor your online reputation on a daily basis which means that now you are going to ask me does that mean i have to be online every day yes please uh and it's going to be hard for those of us who have not done it yet uh but it you have to reach that stage so i wasn't like this like sumana and i have you know worked uh, years in ans and i was not like that i worked in capgemini after ans and i was not like that but uh towards uh, 2017 is when i i started realizing that it is important um and i i am quite active you know online today um so on a daily basis you have to see how people are engaging with the posts that you put up certain posts of mine will you know get about 8000 views and some will get like 100 views and i keep wondering why because if you want to keep your online brand and which is what serves as the elevator pitch in the virtual world it is important for you to know why something worked and why something didn't work and then you retrospect did you use the right hashtags as she said was the content you know of the mark do you think you know the audience that you have because you have a network the first sort of people who are going to read your content is your immediate network of connections am i talking about stuff which might be you know useful to them the other thing is also the timing sometimes you know the timing of your post you know works and does not work sometimes reshares work sometimes reshares don't work so there are plenty of things and this is not a class to understand all of that and if you really are interested then maybe ruchi and bagishri can you know uh, do a more detailed session on that uh, get an expert on that but this is important so you have to first go on to online media ensure that you have a presence on certain online media for sure linkedin in today's professional world and then start contributing to content could be yours could be reshares could be something that you have read and you put it out and put out commentary to say you know a, a wonderful read and this is what i think uh, you know this is uh, the, the author is trying to say and tag some people use some hashtag so that's how you start building your online conversations which eventually creates your online brand and serves as your elevator pitch and uh, 
never ever stop listening don't say okay i've done it you know enough i have reached a stage where you know now i have a great cloud i have a great presence no never every day is different every hour is different so please ensure that you are listening on a daily basis difficult to start with but you will reach you will reach there if you are really you know wanting to make this work and all i will say is there is no way out there is no way out but to kind of become savvy with this and make it a part of your life so i google my name is yes sorry tell me i just wanted to understand the third point monitoring your online reputation on a daily basis is that on the number of on the quality and the number of comments that i receive on my post absolutely that's that's the monitoring right i write something and nobody engaged with it nobody liked it um, mm -hmm. and nobody put out a comment nobody reshared it it's kind of just sitting with 10 views mm -hmm. it makes you think why is it that you know nothing happened with this while you thought that it was very very relevant in, you know for the kind of leader that you are for the kind of thought leadership you want to you know people to realize that you have for some reason this has not worked um and you you may not be able to take action on it immediately but you kind of you know continue so tomorrow you'll put out another one or once a week you'll put out another post and over a period of time you will see what is it that you know is working and what's not working and you will you will start tweaking it towards what works okay but be yourself so don't get me wrong hmm for the sake of attracting audience don't start writing about stuff which you don't believe in and which is not the brand that you want to create and which is not the pitch you want to give you still have to be yourself so what i write about is always about a little bit about the education industry because i have come in to that newly but a lot about the gender space a lot about you know uh, women leadership and leadership in general and uh, then of course if i have attended some events and i have given some talks and all of that but it will not be you know a, uh, you know i like for example after this session i may go and put out a post on linkedin it will not be as simple as uh, thank you leenan for having me over why should somebody engage with a post like that it will sound like i'm bragging but mm -hmm. if i say thank you leenan for having me over i had a great conversation with the attendees and i tag some of you put the right hashtags and i write a couple of takeaways from today's you know discussion uh, about mm -hmm. the elevator pitch or about social listening then people are interested because now there is content that they can read and they can contribute and you know comment and say yeah of course this worked for me or this is not worked for me and things like that Does it make sense? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So I do want to give you time for questions. So I'm just going to run through this. So I googled my name yesterday, and you can Google it every day if you are active online. Then every day results are going to be different. So on the left hand side is page one, and on the right hand side, so my left hand side and my right hand side uh, is page four. So I had four pages of myself coming up, and then five, six, seven, I had some trickles of myself, but some other Neerajas and Ganeshas came up. but what it is telling me is the first thing it's pulling out is linkedin which means the message to me is that i'm very active on linkedin which is good you know i do want to be the second thing it pulled out is while it could have you know pulled any it could have pulled any order right but it has pulled out the mit inclusive innovation challenge as the second and i'm guessing that probably is because of you know the seo that they have or because of mit being mit Uh, which is good for me i mean i am happy because i was a, a jury uh, member for their uh, innovation challenge the global innovation challenge for two consecutive years so i am glad that if somebody wants to look up neerja ganesh the second thing is coming up is mit then of course you know it talks about me being a mentor on jobs for her then it says i'm on twitter then it says that i'm an author at women's web and i'm happy with that also because i do write and i want people to know that i write then on page 4 it's talking about me speaking at this upcoming event which is awake aware arise so i would invite all of you to please come and you know uh, listen to that um, it's it's a conversation between me and my daughter about next gen uh, women leaders so i'm sorry ruchi i'm using this platform to show you know showcase something uh, but i'm just saying that in an order look at the order in which things are coming up and if you feel that this is not the order in which it should come why is it that uh, you know mit is coming up 
I was thinking that something else should come up. Then it tells you, you are listening to this and it tells you that probably your focus should be on something else, right? Uh, so I'm happy with this picture. Now from this, does anyone want to say what do they know about Nirja? Had you not heard, uh, you know, Bhagishri's introduction and whatever I said about myself, if you had just Googled my name and this is what had come up, what is the picture of Nirja that you would, uh, you know, cook up based on this? Anyone who doesn't know me? That you are a woman, um, woman leadership consultant. Uh, this is Anu, by the way. This is what I would think. Sure. If I didn't know and I saw these results. Okay. All right. And uh, MIT would just add a little bit of more incentive for me to really go and find you because for me, MIT is a huge, credible platform. Sure. Sure. Yes. I would put you under the category of a super achiever and I would be interested in connecting with you. Okay. Sure. Thank you. I'm not a super achiever. All of us are super achievers. <laughs> but you see, you know, there's a lot of, yeah, anyone? Yeah, I would say that uh, based on this, I would uh, come to know that you have done a lot of work in the area of diversity. And if I'm right. someone who's in that area, maybe I want to connect with you. That Absolutely. Way. True. True. Yes, yeah, she has. So, and she's an award winner in the area of diversity. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. So it does talk about Nirja being a mentor because there's quite a few you know, aspects of mentorship coming here. It talks about me being an author. It talks about me being a speaker. It talks about me being a consultant in the leadership space. And it does bring about the picture mentor. of me, uh, women, you know, yeah, uh, women uh, leadership. So I'm glad with this profile. But a point to note, this is the last four years of mine. My first 25 years was IT. And it is not... In, uh, if somebody looked at that, nobody would say Nirja was from IT, correct? It is not there. So if I was someone who wants to project that also, then I will have to take action to say, okay, I think the places where I'm going, where, where I'm putting my presence, what I'm writing about, where I'm speaking, has to also bring in an IT flavor. If I really want to kind of keep that. If not, then this is okay. So that's the social listening that you have to do and then start tweaking where you go, where you attend, what you speak and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, keeping time in mind. Okay, so I also, you know, Googled and it showed me videos. So this is the plethora of stuff it shows. Um, so it, I've done a lot of webinars. It shows me that in some random order, right? So it is not in the order of when they recorded the video. Uh, it's probably some other, uh, depending on which platform it is sitting on, who, you know, is kind of... Uh, um, invited me to do the session it kind of you know brings up heaps of things so before I put out for questions there is a way to actually uh, see what is your social selling dashboard what they say on LinkedIn and I will leave the link with you in terms of you can do this exercise for yourself uh, it is going to be um, scoring you against four parameters on LinkedIn which is establish your professional brand and for me, it has given me 17 points out of 25. Do I find the right people on LinkedIn? And it has given me only 16 people, 16 out of 25. Do I engage with insights? Again, 14. And do I build relationships? It's given me 25 on 25. So out of this, so I've got a 73 here. And it says that I, I belong to the top 1% of the industry in which I am working. So that's, that's something, you know, kind of a listening experience for me. And in my network, so the network that I have on LinkedIn, which is about 14,000 odd connects, I belong to the top 5%. Now, whether I'm happy with this or not, what I want to do with it secondary, but this is the insight that it gives you. And I said consistent, right? So it's, say, it's kind of telling me that I have been at that 73 mark or 78 mark throughout from July to September. So there is some consistency. So it's not that one day I did something, another week I didn't do anything. Right? So again, um, 25 out of 100. So it says sales professionals kind of considers me as a sales professional based on what I do. Uh, in the internet industry, have an average SSI of 25. While I have the 73, right? Was it 73? 73. So average is 25. I'm at 73. That's why I'm the top 1%. But in my network, the average is 48 and I'm at 73. So which means that I'm in the top 5%. So this is something that you can do. And then based on these insights, 
fine tune the work that you do on LinkedIn. And this is another, you know, interesting word cloud that I got. So if you make a PDF of your LinkedIn profile, and then you put it through, you know, any of the word cloud software, and I'll tell you which one I put through this, it gave me this. So this also is telling you what is the brand that is, you know, getting thrown. Uh, what is it that somebody who looks at your LinkedIn probably makes out, uh, makes of it for you. So for me, there is a lot of Bengaluru that is coming. There is a lot of women that is coming and, uh, you know, leadership that is coming, which is based on the fact that I've been doing a lot of talks in Bangalore. I've been doing a lot of sessions in Bangalore, women leadership and all of that. But in the last six months, things have been different. I've given talks across the globe, but I have not gone ahead and updated my LinkedIn with that. So this is telling me that, hey, Nita, you moved on from, you know, Bangalore to virtual and across, but you've not gone and updated your LinkedIn with that. So if I want now the perception to change, I have to go and update my LinkedIn. Okay. Uh, so yeah, with that, uh, I definitely want to kind of uh, um, give you time to ask questions. We are at five, but if people are okay to hang on for some more time, I'm happy to take questions. Uh, we got a question from Mani. How can we look up our social index dashboard? Okay, let me just put, uh, you know, that uh, link here. I'll do that. Do we have any questions for Nirja? I'm just trying to find the LinkedIn, yeah, the SSI. I think this was an amazing session. I'm getting, uh, I, I'm not getting any questions, but I'm getting remarks that how wonderful the session was and so much we got to know from the session. How beautifully you transitioned the session from the elevator pitch to the whole social media, making it so relevant. I think, and uh, what uh, what took away the whole limelight is the end, uh, the way you ended it. But so much new we got to know, um, the word cloud that you showed us and uh, it really rung a bell in our, uh, in our life that uh, we need to do so much and how we're supposed to progress by updating things everywhere. So we have a question from Amrita. Can I start with a storyline as an elevator pitch? Do you want to try it out now? Uh, how about if I say that I am a woman in progress and I want all of you to help me in this progress and then start saying something because I feel that the first line should be catchy. Sure, so sure, definitely. Is correct approach? Absolutely. As long as, you know, you kind of, you know, uh, know what you're going to transition from that first line, second line into the story, uh, which, which aligns to that first line. And you kind of leave it uh, oh, by inviting someone for a conversation. You can start. Not an issue. And then can I always say that uh, I'm a communication coach or should I avoid that? Because ultimately my goal is to get clients. But should I always include it in my 30 seconds elevator pitch or should I avoid it? Not necessarily. Like, you know, I think, you know, when, when I talk about uh, or when any of us talk about it, uh, as I said, it's not a CV. It's not about you getting a, the the uh, the job. It's not about you getting the client. The elevator pitch only has to get you the next conversation. And in the next conversation, you can talk about everything that you do. So it is not really required. In, in and don't use up the 30 seconds with those two additional words. You may want to use some other powerful words instead of that, which will ensure that the person. You don't want to sound like sales in your pitch. Yes. I generally start with I am a woman in progress and then I proceed to say being a mother and a wife for 25 years says that I am an expert in many spheres and I leave it there. I don't go into the details. Is that correct? Sorry, can you just repeat that? After saying that I am a woman in progress, I generally say that being a mother to a 22 year old and a wife to, a, to somebody for 25 years it speaks a lot about my experience and I leave the rest as a mystery. I let the other person ask, is it fine? 
no i don't think so when it is an elevator pitch i don't think so if it is just you know maybe a casual introduction fine but if it is an intended one because you do want the person to kind of for sure you want the person to talk to you more with that there is no guarantee well, maybe okay. the person is 25 years how did you survive and maybe it will take you to that conversation right yeah and that's it and do you want to really talk about the 25 years of marriage is that what you want to talk with no. another person so you think about no. it, right okay. or you want okay. to talk about some other aspect of your life okay okay now okay sorry puja can you explain what you were meant uh, you put something in the chat uh, so puja if you're using that link you please ensure that your linkedin is open you need to have your linkedin profile open or i think when you actually click on the link it may ask you to put your credentials your credentials because it has to do for your linkedin and then it will give you the dashboard that's yeah, right neeja so surveshi here it's asking for your credentials or oh, is it my and credentials and then it's taking no no not yours for each of our individual credentials ha, yeah. so and then, then it will show you your yeah your report yeah great sure Yes. Yeah, that's what I mean. I have to go to LinkedIn and put that link in the search, right? No, you just click there. It will open up user ID password for LinkedIn, and you put your user ID password there. Okay, okay, okay. Fine, fine. Okay, thanks. Any questions? Any more questions? Uh, this is Shweta. I had one. So, like right now, I am not an entrepreneur. I am a working professional. I'm not looking for a job. But like you said, you know, keeping uh, having that elevator pitch always ready makes a lot of sense. And that's where I was thinking, if I have to update my uh, LinkedIn profile to be an elevator pitch, uh, what? How should I do it? Because like you said, you know, there has to be something uh, which I want to uh, say I'm an expert on. I have done a lot of work on diversity. Uh, in my organization but that's all linked with my organization so uh no uh, what can you just give some tips on how should i you know start thinking about building that elevator pitch further mm -hmm. because so uh, this is like online? Said, yeah, this online. online yeah yeah so ideally as i said what is the value proposition that you carry which you want to give to the others we all right. have done multiple things right but right. there is one thing that you want to be of value to the entire world right. Hmm. So that value proposition you put in your headline. Okay. Yeah. And then of course you have rest of the fields which will talk about the X Y Z that you have done. Other things that I do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But your headline yeah, that... ideally should be the value proposition. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Thanks. Anu, will you please give me a very very brief audit of my pitch one I used on Twitter? Anu, we can definitely connect. Uh, you have my LinkedIn. You can find me Neerja Ganesh on LinkedIn. Uh, and then we can connect and let, we can definitely you know discuss this a little more for sure. Great. So Anu will get some personal tutoring, <laughs> and that's really nice of you, Nirja, to say that and um, and to help them on a personal level uh, beyond this platform. Uh, we can take one last question. Any any question? We don't mind taking one last question. People, before. you can people you can reach out to. Uh, uh, Nisha, any time on LinkedIn, she is there. You can reach out. You can send her a message, and if you have any question or any doubts, she would be there to help you out. And it's a great way to connect with her <laughs> and uh, build your connection. And she's very approachable. To add, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. she will definitely. I will second reply. that. <laughs> yeah, if I can uh, just add it, Surveshi here, like. Uh, Nija, clearly some food for thought. So I went online with LinkedIn in like Q4 two thousand nineteen. Uh, and as you're speaking today, like it's clearly time that I go back and change some things on my LinkedIn profile uh, to make it more relevant. Um, and clearly, some food for thought on my elevator pitch, given where we are now. Right. So thank you a lot as always. Uh, our catch-up is pending, Urvashi. Yes. Yes, I will message you. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Okay, can I request all of you to um, show your, uh, just switch on your video for a moment so I can click picture. This can be a good memory for all of us. Actually, we had 20 and uh, we are just left with 12 now by the time I have to click a picture. 
they miss out because I will use this on LinkedIn. So they miss out that opportunity. Mehak and Hitesha, feeling shy? Uh, just give me a moment. I will immediately take a quick snapshot. Thank you all. Thank you so much for uh, uh, for joining this session. We're really glad. And uh, of course, thank you so much, Nirja, for um, addressing everyone's queries so patiently and also giving them a chance to approach you on a, on a, on a, uh, on a level beyond this platform. We are so grateful to have you today and your session was really something that we we're all awaiting for the longest time. So many takeaways. Um, so many takeaways. Seriously, I'm sure everyone has made their own notes. There's so much to learn. I am very active on social media, but the things that you told me is going to really make me think and ponder over what things I can do. And I'm sure like me, everyone here is going to make a change to their Absolutely. social media identity. And that has become so important in our life today. And very especially important. during so, yeah. the pandemic. You know, with that 78 number, you know, I was feeling very pleased. And then I asked one LinkedIn expert and uh, she said, get it to 90. Only then you have something to talk about. <laughs> so it's a work in progress for all of us. All of us. So start and you will reach yeah. there. Don't worry. Yeah. At some point in time, we have to start. We have to start building up. And thank you so much again. And uh, so much. we come up with sessions every month. Uh, next month we have uh, on body language. Uh, we'll uh, very soon uh, release the uh, creatives. Uh, uh, it's next um, next month, it's on 10th of October. So maybe 10 days prior to that, we'll release our creatives and you can join the session if you're interested in the topic. And I'm sure even that will be very helpful. We make sure that our sessions are relevant to the current pandemic. Uh, it's more virtual based, but also uh, it will help us uh, in our uh, golden post-COVID days. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> which will take some time for us, but we'll soon go there as well. Thank you very much. Have a nice day, all of you. Thank, Bye -bye. thank you so much. Thank Have you, Nisha. Thank weekend. you so much. Thank you, Nisha. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Pooja, you get to know about our events through social media handles. You can uh, follow... Um, uh, you can follow Lean and Women at Work Facebook page, Twitter, Insta. Uh, we have a Lean and Women at Work uh, WhatsApp group as well. Uh, uh, you can be a part of it. I'm not really sure. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying, Bhageshri. I'm a group, part of a couple of groups of Lean in, but uh, we have a different Lean, lean a different Lean and Women at Work. So a Lean and Women, a Lean and Women at Work is a separate uh, uh, circle, a separate network. Itself. So okay. uh, uh, you can search us on LinkedIn. We have a LinkedIn page. We have a uh, we have an Insta page. We have a we are on Facebook also. We are face face. We have a Facebook group. We have a Facebook page. So just uh, type in in the search and you'll find us. You just have to uh, join. You can follow the page. So most join. welcome to join. Yeah. yeah, of course. I I mean, and we have uh, LinkedIn monthly. is my heart and uh, I, I attend as much as possible so this um, is it possible for you to add me to the whatsapp group uh, you can do one thing uh, you can share your number mm -hmm. and we can uh, we can send you the link to join the whatsapp group. Can I it? sorry you can uh, put your number here on the uh, on the chat box mm -hmm. We'll just wait. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do the needful. Yeah, you got the number, right? Okay. You got my number, right? Sorry? You got my number. Yeah, right? I got the number. I pasted it uh, on uh, Ruchi's, uh, uh, Ruchi's uh, WhatsApp. Ruchi will take okay. care of the other thing. Okay. Cool, cool. I've then. shared the link Hope for the uh, Lean and Women at Work network. So you can join, you can register on this. 
and okay. uh, from there we can add you on all of our social medias sure 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 okay ruchi so i have to go to this link and register right that's what you said that's right that's the registration uh, link for our network okay okay fine fine i'll do it right away thank you so much thank you it was right. nice knowing you okay. thank you everyone okay, okay. Bye, -bye. bye 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 bye